Did we get it? at the veterinarian again today, but this time not with just one animal. We had to bring in 12 different tortoises that need x-rays because they're doing some pretty weird stuff. We got to go in, you know, basically what's considered the thigh, yep. you know. So we're going to pull the leg out. Can you, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can assist with this? Yeah. Come on out. Well, we got, well, just for demonstration. Do we have the rubbing running? alcohol? Uh, yep, right there. Okay. A little spray bottle. So clean the area first, of course. And then what's cool about these, these little guns, you could just plunge right into the microchip instead of having to, you know, re-clean everything. And then I'm gonna take the leg, and then what we do is we just go. Whoa, 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 time out. Why am I sticking a giant needle into a small tortoise? It's because we are using this for a proper and permanent identification measure. There's three standard ways to do this with turtles and tortoises. You can paint the shell, you can carve something into the shell like notching the scoots, or you can use microchipping. Paint can either be toxic or actually come off. It's not permanent in any form. Notching the shell can be extremely painful for them, and if it's done at too young of an age, it can actually grow out, but microchipping is internal, it's painless, and it's permanent and it's a standard way and more acceptable efficient way to properly identify animals such as tortoises for the future it can even aid in recovering illegally poached animals and help to get them back to their native lands let's head back to the vet right underneath the skin it's a very sharp needle just like that that's it that one's in and then we have the glue is right there glue right, right here to... and just don't touch the skin just put a drop right over that area Oh, okay. Cool. And then we get a little gauze. Awesome. And then you just kind of gap, like you just like push the skin together, like where the thing was. Just okay, like, cool. Just so it's not glue everywhere. So that prevents any you know bleeding that could happen. It's pretty rare, but sometimes they do bleed. And, and then, then scanner. There we go. Number. There's her number. So a little spritz there. And then we'll go. Space. Try to go a little bit flatter. Yep. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Cool. And now the good one of the good reasons to use liquid nails or the glue here to, to get the skin to uh, heal up or close up is because sometimes they can actually push the uh, microchip out. It's rare, but it can happen. Okay. Ending dub. This one is going to be a four six eight nine. Go up in here, down, like right in that groove. Right here, you know, you, you want to just kind of like lay yep. the needle flat and just go right, you know. Yep. Go. There you go, perfect. So, when it comes to the tortoises, they have such tight, dry skin yeah. that, you know, compared to something like a diamondback terrapin or even a snapping turtle, the skin is going to be really rubbery and more flexible. You have a lot more to work with. But with the tortoises, you know, Th there can be accidents can happen a little bit more with them than something like that. Uh, 982-091-065-434-618. Yep. <laughs> it looks like a big needle, but you know, they're, they're so resilient and just going a little bit further. Okay. There you go. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Last four of her is four six two seven. Cool. Hey, do you want to do one? They're all being uh, they're all being champs about it. We got one more in this group. Did you guys think you would be microchipping tortoises from Libya today? 
<laughs> That's where these are from. <laughs> yep. And then you use the black handle, mm -hmm. plunge it in there. And the last four are four, six, six, nine. Whatever one they just did, I didn't get the full one on the one you did. That's one group. Now on to the second one. The last four digits on just on your I just kept writing it and then when um I always like to describe it. Um you're ready. You got ready? One, two, three. Four, six, six, seven. This is the problem female. This is the reason, one of the reasons why we're here. She's the one who kind of kicked this whole thing off. She started digging a nest. She went through the complete process and then actually covered the nest with no eggs in it, which is referred to as phantom nesting. She then proceeded to be territorial and beat the crap out of the rest of the females in the group, which is normal. It's what these tortoises do when they're competing for nesting areas. And then two weeks on the dot from her phantom nest, she then laid a nest actually produced two eggs and covered it. Those eggs are infertile. But then, two weeks later, she phantom nested again. And now, all the females are doing the same kind of behavior where they're, com like they're competing over something. They're being territorial. They're mounting each other the way males mount females. And we know 100% that these are all, in fact, female. So we're trying to figure out what's going on here. They would normally be waking up late winter or maybe like midwinter where they come from and, uh, you know, produce, Ooh, get into reproductive mode and reproduce eggs in the spring. But other keepers of these are getting eggs in the fall and winter. So something about being over here in our part of the world is like reversing them. And so far this has been the only female to lay any eggs. So let's see if you have a second clutch in there. I, I mean, mean, some of these are so incredibly heavy, it's hard to believe that they wouldn't have eggs in them. Not straight, but that one, that one, that one. No, still? Go look. Are they done? I can go Good. in. Yeah. yeah. Clear? Clear. Yeah, it's not as, not as pretty as the one. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, see the microchip there. It's yeah. But, uh, yeah, no, no shell eggs at this point there. In the wow. So look, you know, we'll kind of go through them after and see. No eggs. It's all about catching them at the right time, though, too. I mean, sometimes you might have it where they're right, right, like, the shelling portion depends on the species. I look up, like, time frame service. Some of them do it quicker than others. There, yeah, yeah. But so weird. Reptiles, they do what they want. Yes, they do. <laughs> They're punk rock. <laughs> I don't follow no rules. No. no so no what are we at? That's how many now? Uh, I think it was seven or eight. Now. No, seven now. Seven? So I have five okay. more. Yeah. We got five more to go. Will anybody have eggs? No eggs again. <laughs> I think you're a liar, Loon. <laughs> A liar. These tortoises have been driving me crazy. Or maybe it's the other way around. Maybe I've been driving them crazy. No? Another nay. Is she gravid with eggs? Or is she just really well fed? No. I thought you were an, a turtle expert. This is the craziest reveal party I've ever been a part of. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is a really crazy reveal party. I like that. That's, that's good. I wish I thought of that. see something on this one. I mean, I don't think those are eggs, but look at that. Oh. Oh. Well, the mineralization in there, but I think that could just be some fecal material going through. It doesn't look like a location of bladder stone or anything like that. So we x-rayed for poop. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Ground baking work. No eggs. No 
know what? That's, I mean, into the question, but they could still be cycling. They mm -hmm. could still be going through their follicular their follicular phases. I think that they, I think we have to try to portion them off lightwise. If you can like almost block their enclosure, can you like enclose them a little bit to like? I know like I can make them go dormant. I think it's what yeah. we have to do because so, it, it's natural for them. I mean, yeah. So my plan, because you know, it, even though they they do go dormant in Libya, they. It's nothing like here. You know, 70 is cold there. Yeah. So my objective, or my, my plan rather, with them was to keep them awake for the portion of winter because, yeah. you know, in, in certain parts of their range, it's still hitting like 90 on some days. And then give them like a brief six week, eight week cool down in yeah. the barn, you know, where the lights come off, they go to a safe temperature to where they don't want to be active because it's nowhere near hot for them. Yeah. And then they go back outdoors into their big outdoor pens. And then hopefully that'll be a trigger for them to, you know. Then start doing their normal cycling. Yeah. There because in terms of, like they still have a normal light cycle there, right? Like they're, 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 like daylight decreases in Libya, yeah, I imagine. Yeah. So I think that's what we have to do is decrease that daylight. Like even in the barn, if we can somehow just decrease their lighting, not may not temperature, but decrease the lighting phase, and that might turn off their follicular activity a right. little bit there. Right. Not necessarily changing temperature, but changing and saying, hey, it's winter, mm -hmm. temperature still high, but the right. winter time frame is a little bit. I mean, yeah, it's, it's interesting. I mean, they otherwise look really healthy. I mean, they look great otherwise there. A lot of people don't realize that, you know, species of reptile like this that come from arid or hot parts of the world, they still do go through some kind of dormancy or cooling period, and that is very important for their annual cycle, but it can be hard to replicate in other parts of the world. Um, I'm actually happy about this, though, because, you know, I don't know what was up with that one female that did lay eggs. Yep. Uh, it must have been some kind of fluke, but... Um, Th this now I can safely cool them without worrying about them know, having, egg binding. Yep. You know? Yeah, no dystocia at this point there. I mean, so yeah, no eggs and let's just continue monitor their weights and yeah, we'll get them ready for springtime. Cool. Let's get out of there. I guess we can always dive down through the hay. <laughs> it's always fun to play with poop, right? Of for course. Veterinarian's dream. <laughs> Casey likes to uh, shovel poop, right? Well, that's yeah. the zookeeper's dream. That's the yeah. <laughs> Nothing's better than a clean goat yard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's good. Don't you mean cow yard? Yeah. Cool. Here's your numbers. Okay. okay. Negatives cool. for ant eater. Yeah. Great. <laughs> Thank you. There you go. Awesome. Awesome. All your negatives. Yeah. Okay. I sent them over. All my negatives. And they're all labeled. <laughs> no eggs. <laughs> Great guys. Awesome. Cool. All right. Right, that was a very eventful day at the veterinarian. I gotta say, look at this species. They're unbelievably beautiful. They kind of look like mini leopard tortoises, don't they? They have the light colored carapace with those beautiful black rosettes and blotches all over them, but they are not. They're a member of the Testudo Graica species complex, which means they are in fact a Greek tortoise. But as I've told you guys in the past, Greek tortoises really don't actually come for Greece, except for the Iber Greek. All the others are found in other parts of the world, like North Africa, for example, and that's where Libya is. This is one of my all-time favorite tortoises, but they are extremely difficult. And the reason for that is the vast majority of Libyan tortoises that are in captive management are in fact originally at some point in time from the wild. Now that's problematic. These animals are used to a specific climate. It's arid, a lot of times it's coastal, and well, when you bring them over here or to other countries, they have an extremely hard time adapting. Lucky for us, this group is very solid. There are two males, there are 12 females. So there's a lot of breeding potential here. Why is that important? We need captive bred babies to be reproduced, put out there so that eventually we are encompassed by captive bred stock. And we try to do this, not just us, many, many different entities try to do this with turtles and tortoises of species from all over the world because we want to put a stop to the illegal importation and poaching of these animals. Now, when it comes to the Libyan, well, that's not illegal yet. These animals can still be taken out of their native Libya, and there are, in fact, quotas in place that allow people to legally do this. It's still not fair to the animal. A wild animal belongs in nature, but when they are forced into captivity, the best hope for them is getting them to reproduce so we can have that captive bread stock, which will hopefully then eventually lessen the pressures on bringing in the problematic wild caught ones. So none of our Libyan tortoises have eggs, which is pretty awesome. 
It would have been nice to know that we had babies on the horizon, but it wouldn't have been at a natural time of year. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set them up in very simple, small winter quarters, and we're going to gradually decrease the temperatures and their feed over the course of the next two to three weeks so that they can sleep for the remainder of winter and be woken up in spring. And hopefully then that spring awakening trigger will cause these females to start developing ova and produce eggs. All right, this is where our Libyan tortoises are gonna spend the remainder of winter. Very simple, very small quarters because we wanna know where they are at all times when they start going dormant and just dig in. So they're on a substrate of sand, dirt, and some hay. Um, usually straw is a little bit better as far as keeping things, you know, mold free, but because these are an arid dwelling species and there really will be no dampness to these enclosures, the hay is totally fine. Um, so that's all we're going to do is we're just going to keep them comfortable. We're going to let them eat a little bit and we're going to do some frequent soaks because even though they're an arid dwelling tortoise, as I've told you guys, they absolutely need water to drink and soak in. So we'll do that a few times a week for them and that will help evacuate their system so that they can go to sleep with a pretty much food free stomach, which is important because if too much food sits in the stomach of a hibernating or brumating tortoise, it can actually rot the stomach. It doesn't have to be over the top empty, but you don't really want them going to sleep with a full belly. You know, think about that. You don't want to do that, right? That's uncomfortable. So. This was really great because it enabled us to get a nice close look at these animals and their health is there. They're heavy, they're bright eyed, uh, their behavior is just a little bit off, which brings me to the point of why it can be such a bad idea for these foreign or exotic wild caught animals to enter the pet trade in the droves that they do. They get thrown off, it's not fair to them ends up not being fair to you, especially if you're trying to do good by them and try to help them to make more of themselves to have that captive bred stock out there. You know, don't forget, in veterinary medicine, we don't fully understand the vast majority of these species and the different things that they can carry because of the parts of the world that they come from are so remote and even dangerous to try to get to. So there's really minimal studies that have been done on tortoises like Libyans and so many others across this beautiful planet. But, we're lucking out. These animals really do seem to be in good shape. I'm very thrilled with what we found out today. Do I want eggs? Of course I want eggs. I want there to be a future for this species to help lessen that pressure on those precious wild populations. But that's gonna be it. It's gonna be lights out for the Libyans in the coming weeks, and then you guys will get to see them again in the spring, and leave some positive feedback in the comments, guys. Let's root for them. Let's hope for some baby Libyan Greek tortoises in the spring.